Officer identified in fatal shooting. Investigation underway after a train derailment near Oosburg. And Sheboygan Common Council elects District 2 Alderperson. These and other local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, service of WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Scott Maloff, in for Maddie Pfister, and this is Community News Review for Tuesday, July 7, 2020. Sheboygan police named the officer who shot and killed an armed man last week. Police say Officer Brian Prey, who has been with the department for two and a half years, shot and killed Kevin Ruffin Jr. when Ruffin refused to drop two knives. Investigators say Prey tried less than lethal options first. When those failed, he shot Ruffin. Prey is on administrative leave per department policy. The state's Department of Justice is reviewing the shooting. A Sheboygan man is in jail and a woman is in the hospital after a drunk driving crash Monday night. Sheboygan police responded to 25th and North Avenue around 8.30 for a car that had slammed into a tree. The driver, a 50-year-old Sheboygan man, was arrested on a felony OWI charge and for possessing a firearm while under the influence. His 47-year-old female passenger was hospitalized with serious but non-life-threatening injuries. With around half a dozen new positive tests received in Sheboygan County each day since Friday, a total of 246 COVID-19 cases have now been confirmed here. Six new positive results were received on Saturday, six more on Sunday, and seven were added in Monday's report from the County Division of Public Health. Eleven more persons have recovered since Friday, leaving 41 active cases and no hospitalizations. Those ages 20 to 39 account for over 90 county cases, the most by any age group. Another 70, over one quarter of all cases, have been experienced by those 40 to 59 years old. 48 showed up in those 60 to 79, 25 in persons under age 20, and 12 in those 80 and older. In Wisconsin, the death toll from COVID-19 has remained at 796 since reported on Friday by the State Department of Health Services. Over 32,000 COVID-19 cases have been tallied, with over 700 added Saturday, 500 more Sunday, and nearly 500 on Monday. Since peaking at 10.8% on Saturday, the percent of tests coming back positive has declined each day to arrive at 9.2% Monday. 3,600 persons in Wisconsin are hospitalized. That's 11% of active cases. Deaths have occurred in 2.5% of cases in Wisconsin. By an 8 to 1 vote, Roberta Felicki Paneski was elected by the Sheboygan Common Council to fill the unexpired term in District 2. Todd Wolf resigned that seat when he was a finalist for the city, alder, uh, city administrator position, a role he officially begins today. Felicki Paneski and Travis Gross were the two candidates nominated for the vacant aldermanic seat. In addition to submitting a letter of interest and resume to the city clerk, both candidates were given five minutes to present their case before the council in last night's meeting. Felicki Paneski emphasized her work as a member and chair of the Redevelopment Authority, serving at the appointment of five different mayors. Immediately after the election, she was sworn in by city clerk Meredith De Bruin. Then Mayor Vanderseen invited her to take a seat on the council dais and participate in the balance of the agenda. Officials have no idea when all the coal from a train derailment Sunday afternoon will be cleaned up. Sheboygan County Dispatch got the 911 call about the crash shortly after 2 p.m. Responders found 13 full coal cars had jumped the tracks at the Black River just east of Highway A in the Oostburg area. The accident blocked a number of east-west roads. The train sat for several hours before the unaffected cars were pulled from the scene. Crews began cleanup Sunday afternoon, but there is no timeline on when that will be complete. Investigators say it could take months to find an official cause for the derailment. 
select results of a second round of COVID-19 testing conducted at Pine Haven Christian Communities have come back positive for several staff members, but no residents, according to a spokesperson for the senior living facilities. The infected staff were located at the Giddings Avenue campus in Sheboygan Falls. The other two campuses on Haven Drive in Sheboygan Falls and Pine Drive in Oostburg had no positive returns. The affected staff are now in home quarantine. Results and testing are ongoing with both residents and staff constantly monitored for any signs of COVID-19. And according to the spokesperson, extensive measures are in place to reduce any potential spread. All residents and their families will be contacted as soon as any new information becomes available. Sheboygan Shoreline Metro bus system entered phase four of operations Monday as adjustments are made in the response to the changing COVID-19 pandemic. Fares are back in place. Temporary demand response service has been discontinued for non-certified customers and regular weekday and Saturday services are back to normal hours. The trolley service known as Route 40 is also operating again. Capacity limits remain. That's 15 individuals plus the driver. Shoreline Metro says that high risk individuals should continue taking extra precautions and travel only when absolutely necessary for safety. And everyone should maintain social distancing guidelines on the buses and in the transfer stations. The Gus Macker three on three basketball tournament, the major annual fundraiser for the boys and girls clubs of Sheboygan County has fallen victim to COVID-19. The event typically held each August at the land park draws teams from across the nation. But the Boys and Girls Club CEO, Christina Sai, says not this year, making the decision for the safety of players and the community at large. The cancellation means the loss of tens of thousands of dollars for the Boys and Girls Club. Over $50,000 was generated last year for programming that serves area youth over the summer. And Sai says now hoping that individuals and businesses will step up and help fill the gap, saying that programs on learning, loss prevention, well-being, and positive adult connections are more important now than ever. Donations to the Boys and Girls Club in support of summer programming can be made at thepositiveplace.com or by mail to 107 Cedar Street, Sheboygan Falls, 53085. Finally, the Humane Society of Sheboygan County will break ground on its new shelter this Thursday at 5 p.m., having now raised over half of its $4 million goal. The new building will be located near its current facility on 21st and Mayflower Avenue on Sheboygan's north side, and is intended to provide enough room not only to safely care for every animal that needs it, but also provide educational opportunities to the community. With another 1.6 million still to be raised, those wishing to donate can visit their fundraising page at adoptsheboygancounty.org slash capital campaign. That's today's report. Tune in next time for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.